Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to remind you to check out our other Western podcasts released daily by going to otrwesterns.com or searching OTR Westerns in your podcast app of choice. I also wanted to invite you to check out our other podcast channel releasing non-Western shows by going to otnetcast.com or by searching otnetcast in your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is February 19th, 1956, and the title is The New Hotel. Let's get into it. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. That's Enoch Mills' new hotel. Yeah, it will be when they get it built, Chester. I never heard of a cattle rancher going into hotel business before, Mr. Oh, Jones. Enoch Mills is a man of enterprise. Look yonder at him. <laughs> He's as proud as a new father, ain't he? <laughs> well, it isn't every day a man builds a new hotel in Dodge. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Oh, Mr. Mills? Yeah, it's gone up pretty fast, isn't it? Well, we got most a month before it's finished. Uh-huh. How many rooms are you going to have? Fifteen. Could have more, but this is going to be a class hotel. Not some hay tent like Jim Doby's Dodge House. My, I bet he's jealous. That Doby's had a monopoly in this town long enough. <laughs> You're right about him being jealous, Chester. He's already done everything he can to keep me from building Oh, what's he done, Edith? You know, tried to buy up all the good lumber in town, for one thing. Thought he'd leave me with nothing but a lot of warpy old cottonwood. But I got on to him soon enough. I'm building with the best, Marshal. All of it. Ash, Hackberry. Yonder he comes now. Huh? <laughs> He's scouting the enemy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Let him scout. He'll be out of business soon enough. <laughs> Looks like a town meeting we're about to have. How are you, Marshal Chester? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Doby. We're coming along just fine, Doby. Of course, it's only a little bitty hotel. You'll never beat me, Nick. You're getting too old. Old? Doby, I'll eat the goose that fattens in your grave. <laughs> Not likely. Anyways, what do you know about the hotel business, Enoch? You won't last a month. Now, man. look, man. Dodge can use two hotels. There's plenty of trade here. Why, why don't you quit fighting each other? You're just scared of a little competition, Doby. You ain't slept a night since I started building. You got a ranch to run, Enoch. That's enough for one man. You shouldn't be pushing into other people's territory. Well, you ain't gonna stop me, Doby. I've tried to stop you, and I'll go on trying. Eh, eh, Marshal, he's threatening me. You heard him. I'm gonna fight you, Enoch. I'm going to fight you all the way. <laughs> so now you'd better start staying up nights. That man belongs in jail, Marshal. Dobby's a hard one, Enoch. He'll give you a fight. But I don't think he'll do anything illegal. Oh, you don't? Well, you just wait and see. 
And it's going to be your fault for not stopping him now. The whole blame is going to be on your shoulders, Marshal. And I ain't going to let nobody forget it. Evening, Kitty. <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, I came by to tell you something, Matt. Oh? Uh-huh. You ever hear of a man called Gil Shank? No, don't tell me he's in town. I met him at the Long Branch this afternoon. He didn't say much, but a man like that stands out like a white buffalo. Uh, you can pick him, Kitty. Yeah, Gil Shank's a gunman and a crook. He isn't wanted that I know of, but uh, he sure ought to be. I didn't figure him for a drummer. Well, I'll let him stay around a few days. See what he's up to, maybe. Well, there were a couple of men with him, but it's hard to say if they're friends or if they just met. Yeah, they're probably friends. Gil Shank never liked traveling alone. Much. Well, they didn't look like gunmen, Matt. Just a couple of saddle buns. Oh, well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Uh... Thanks for telling me, anyway, Kitty. Mr. Dillon, I... oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Something to scare you, Chester? Worse than that, the new hotel's on fire. On fire? Uh-huh. On fire. And old Enoch saying Jim Doby there. Oh, the place. You, you better get down there, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Introducing one of the country's best-known jazz musicians and arrangers, Mr. Bobby Haggard. How about whistling along with him? Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, as an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. By the time I reached the fire, a bucket brigade had been formed. And there wasn't much to do but get in line myself. Even while we worked, I could tell the fire had been set and that the wood had been soaked with kerosene. It was all over in a half hour, but not because we'd put it out. There was nothing left to burn. Next morning, I went back and had a talk with Enoch. And he'd already bought more lumber, and he had his workmen busy cleaning up. This ain't going to stop me, Marshal. Takes more than a little arson to stop Enoch Mills. Enoch, uh, I uh, guess there's no need to ask you who you think did it, is there? What? Jim Doby, of course. You know as well as I do. Yeah, but you don't have any proof of that, Enoch. I got what proof I need. And if you was anything of a lawman at all, Doby would be in jail right now. Enoch, you know I can't arrest a man because you and he are enemies. Well, it don't matter. I ain't counting on you no more. I got other ways. Yes, sir. Hey, come in right there, Marshal. What? There. You mean Gil Shank? That's right. He seen me after the fire last night, and he, uh, he offered to go to work for me. What do you need a gunman for, ain't it? Yeah, that makes you sit up, don't it? You and Doby both, you bet it does. Marshal Dillon. Well, now, this is a pleasure. 
Yeah. He knows you're working for me, Shank. I told him. Just Shank, Enoch. What do you mean? Well, is he the only one you hired? I'm alone, Marshal, if that's what you're driving at. You're making a bad mistake, Enoch. You don't need a man like this. I could take offense at that, Marshal. No? Well, why don't you let me know when you decide, huh? I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, that's telling him. I will right, we'll take care of Jim Doby next. You won't do a thing to Jim Doby. Either one of you. Well, you're protecting the criminal, Marshal. But it ain't gonna work. Shank's got a plan. You said you was gonna figure something out, Shank. You done it? Well, Enoch, what with the law being so loose around here, we gotta protect your hotel day and night. How many riders you got out at the ranch? You know, about 20. I want 15 of them. You what? I want them here in Dodge. We're going to put a guard around this building 24 hours a day. Well, I can't spare 15 men, Shank. Who's going to watch the cattle? You ain't moving cattle this time of year, are you? Well, of course not. Then five riders is enough. You want this hotel to go up or don't you? All right. I'll send for them. Hey. Hmm? You that Jim Doby over there? Yeah, that's him. Come to enjoy his dirty work, I guess. Shank. What, Marshal? The first sign of any of your dirty work, and I'm coming after you. Fast. Morning, Marshal. Doby. Uh. I suppose I'm getting the blame for this. You are. Yeah. Then why ain't you arresting me? I've known you for a long time, Toby. You're pig-headed and you can be downright mean. But you don't fight this way. You make it hard to thank you, Marshal. You can thank me by laying off Enoch Mills for a while. There's going to be enough trouble without your making any. <laughs> Maybe there ain't nothing going to happen after all, Mr. Jones. What? Uh, I mean about old Enoch Mills' hotel. Been a week now, and everything is purely pawn peaceful. Well, what with 15 armed guards spilling one another day and night, it ought to be. Mm. I didn't see that fellow Gil Shank running yesterday. Oh, Enoch said he rode down to Tuscosa. What for? To hold up the bank? <sighs> it wouldn't surprise me. No, that be... Well, here's Mr. Botkin. No? Huh? Well, morning, Marshal. Morning, Chester. Morning, Mr. Botkin. You look like you're dressed for traveling. Well, a banker doesn't do all his work behind a desk, Marshal. I've been looking over some land up north the last couple of days. Oh, did you have a good trip? Fine, except for crossing the Pawnee. It was almost in flood. And how'd you make it? Well, I was lucky, Chester. Some cowboys were taking a herd across, and they gave me a hand. Swimming a herd across the Pawnee this time of year? Yes. Must have had a thousand head, Marshal. Well, uh... Who was it? I I don't know anybody moving cattle now. They were strangers to me. Huh. Uh, what was the brand? I'm afraid I'm not much of a brand reader, Marshal. Oh, you, you think you could draw it for me? Uh, come over here in the dirt, Mr. Buck. All right. Here. Here's a stick. Now, uh, what do it look like? Well... There was a circle here and a line through it, like this. It stopped just about here. Well, everybody knows that brand, Mr. Buck. Everybody but me, I guess. Where would they be taking those cattle, Marshal? Only one place. The Greystone Indian Agency is about 20 miles beyond there. Oh, they're going to sell them to the agency, eh? They won't get top prices, but it's always a fast cash sale. Chester. Yes, sir? Go saddle three horses and tie them up behind the office, and then wait for me. I'll be back after dark. Go ahead, Enoch. 
Don't know what you're bringing me here this time of night for, Marshal. Well, I got everything ready, Mr. Dillon. Ah, good, Chester. You got everything ready for what? Well, I don't know exactly, Mr. Mills. You just... Oh, I think you're both crazy. Well, now, here, that's no way to talk. Nobody's done nothing to you. I suppose burning my hotel down was nothing, huh? It, it wasn't a hotel. It was only the frame of one. Chester, I'm beginning to think you and the marshal was in on it. Hmm? Both of you. You're such big friends of that Jim Doby. You'll believe most anything, won't you, Enoch? Anything but what you tell me, Marshal Dillon. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, it's sure enough true. All right, I'm getting out of here now. I got nothing to say to you, and you got nothing to say to me. Don't know why I come here in the first place. Wait a minute, Enoch. Well, make it fast. I will. I was going to try to explain something to you, but I can see that it'd be a waste of time. You all through? No, I'm just getting started. Hey, that what? All right, give me that gun, Marshal. I'm going to keep it for you, Enoch. Right here in my belt. You arresting him for something, Mr. Dillon? No, I'm not arresting him, Chester. I'm kidnapping him. <laughs> Are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your kitchen? Getting ready for Sunday supper? Maybe in your living room, relaxing? Or out driving? Say, be sure and watch the road. But remember, there's pleasure ahead when you smoke Chesterfield. When you satisfy yourself with Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. A more perfectly packed cigarette gives you an open, easy draw that unlocks all the better taste and mildness of fine tobaccos. And Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, is more perfectly packed, with an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Remember, to the touch... To the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Buy Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy. The most. Enoch Mills was about as mad as any man I'd ever seen. But I managed to get him on a horse, and then he and Chester and I rode quietly out of Dodge. By noon next day, we'd covered some 60 miles and were at the Greystone Indian Agency. It was run by a man called Albert Leach. It didn't seem too bright, but at least I could tell he wasn't a grafter like most. I had a talk with him, and I brought Enoch in to meet him. Come in, gentlemen, come in. Have a chair. You give me a chair, mister. I'll bash both your heads in with it. Now, really, Mr. Mills, how come you know my name? Marshal Dillon told me. Uh, this is Albert Leach, and he runs the agency. I don't care who he is or what he runs. He's got anything to do with whatever it is you're up to, Marshal. He's going to end up in jail, too. Good heavens. Uh, don't worry about it, Leach. Enoch was up all night. I think I put him in a bad temper. Look, uh, Leach, I want you to tell him how many cattle you bought yesterday. 1,012 head. Mm hmm. And you paid $15 a head. Well, then you robbed somebody. Then he couched and walks worth $20. The government never pays over 15 Mr. Mills. Which is why I never sell to the government. Uh, we haven't got much time. Have you paid for those cattle yet, Leach? No. The boss will be here any minute to collect the money. In fact, that's him riding in now. Yeah. All right, you pay him, Leach, and we'll wait in the other room. I understand, Marshal. Come on, Enoch. You're getting yourself in deeper and deeper, Marshal. But I've about decided you won't go to jail. I'm just going to lock you up in a madhouse. Quiet now, Enoch. <laughs> just listen. Well, you got 
some money, mister? Are you the boss of that outfit? Enoch Mills is the boss. I run it for him. What? Be quiet. Come on, give me the money. I ain't got it. Well, that's day. Gil Shank. Well, hurry it up, mister. Now, where's the money? Oh, I'll kill him. I'll kill him with my bare hands. No, wait a minute. In it, dirty thief, Shank. What are you doing here? Dylan. Hold it, Shank. <laughs> Yeah, you killed him, Marshal. You're not hit, are you, Enoch? Yeah? No, no, he missed me. That's what he wanted my men guarding the hotel for. That rotten criminal. He had some help. Now we're going to be a long time finding him. I don't care about them. You got him. He set that fire, Enoch. He planned the whole thing. He had it figured out. Why didn't you tell me? You won't believe anything I say. Remember? I've been a fool, Marshal. Looks like I owe you an apology. Never mind me. What about Jim Doby? You've given him a bad name. I don't know, Marshal. I never should have started that hotel in the first place. I'm a cattleman. I'm no... Innkeeper. You mean you're not going to finish it? Oh, I'll finish it. But then you know what I'm going to do? I'll go to Jim Doby and, and I'll ask him to run it for me. You think he'll do it, Marshal? Yeah, he'll do it, Enoch. And whenever you come to town, he might even let you stay there. If you behave yourself. moment our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed, unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield, mild. Yet they satisfy the most. You know, on the frontier, an outlaw was called a gunman, while a peace officer was referred to as a gunfighter. But they both lived by their guns. And they usually died by them. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Stobkin, Vic Perrin, John Daner, Harry Bartell, and Joe Duvall. Harley Bear as Chester and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. If you're a young man of draft age or a veteran, the National Guard offers you many outstanding opportunities. Contact your local National Guard unit for details. Smokers, this is it. L and M filters. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M. So good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L&M today. Relax with L&M. So good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gun Smoke.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.